It is mid-August 2022 and I am in Wyoming's Wind River Range for a backpacking adventure. I'm fixing to set off into the Poposha Wilderness. This is my second trip to the winds but my first trip to this particular area of the range. As with any trip of this magnitude there are quite a few challenges that I could face along the way. Two of the biggest include the weather. For the next several days there is between a 70 to 100 percent chance of thunderstorms each day and I'm actually in a flood warning from today until tomorrow night so I'm hopeful for the best in terms of the weather. The second biggest challenge would be the terrain and navigation. One of the most fun things about the wind is doing some off trail travel and uh, the plan that I have set up would take me on some of the most difficult hiking that, that I've ever done and so We'll kind of see how that develops throughout the trip. I may make some audibles, may make some changes based on conditions and what I'm seeing. But I am very excited to be here in one of the most beautiful areas of the world. And it's time to hit the trail. Temperatures absolutely perfect for backpacking. Maybe in the low 60s right now. And it's just a really beautiful area and a great way to get my feet underneath me for the first part of this adventure. I reckon this is Sheep Bridge over the middle fork of the Poposha River. I officially entered the Poposha Wilderness. Finished up with the Middle Fork Trail for the day. It was mildly buggy. I was pretty much constantly slapping one or two mosquitoes off along the way, but I'm hopeful as I rise in elevation along the Pinto Park Trail towards camp for the night that maybe I'll be able to get away from a little bit of that bug pressure. Rising up, leaving those dirty little skeeters behind. Gathered some ice cold water at this quaint little stream. Now I believe I'm about a mile or so from where I want to look for camp for the night. Home sweet home. I think that little area will be my bedroom back in the trees. And then in my living room, got quite a nice view to enjoy. I'm right at the intersection of the Deep Lakes Cutoff Trail and the Pinto Park Trail. A very light sprinkle has started, so I'm going to go ahead and get set up quickly. The Wind River Range runs approximately 100 miles northwest to southeast and is one of the largest road-free areas in the contiguous United States. On this trip, I'm using the Wind River Range South map by Beartooth Publishing, supplemented by the free U.S. Forest Service Visitor Map app. Let's take a look at the map for day one. I started at the Sheep Bridge Trailhead beside the Worthen Meadow Reservoir, followed the Sheep Bridge Trail across Sheep Bridge to connect with the Middle Fork Trail, which took me to Pinto Park Trail, and I followed that until I found camp for the night close to the intersection with the Deep Creek Cutoff Trail. Day one was about nine and a half miles. Day one of my backpacking adventure in the winds has been an awesome day. If I had scripted the day out, I don't think I could have wrote any better than what I experienced throughout my travels. The weather was absolutely perfect, the temperatures were very comfortable for backpacking, and the rain has held off until the evening. Great hiking for me. I always enjoy hiking through forests and the beautiful pine forest here in the winds. 
along with occasional glimpses of the middle fork of the Poposha or the tall spires of the winds peeking up and I made it to the destination that I wanted to for the day. There has been some thunder rumbling in the distance this evening and uh, a couple drops come down from time to time so I figured there'll probably be a shower at some point. I've got some rambunctious neighbors around here, quite a few chipmunks and some crows as well who have all been uh, letting their presence be known through their cries but it's cool to hear and, and definitely makes one feel like they're out in the wilderness. As long as nothing crazy happens, that'll be the end of day one. Good night. Good morning. Made it to day two. My backpacking adventure in the Wind River Range. Had a pretty calm night last night. A couple showers came through throughout the evening and night. Forced me to pack up a wet tent this morning. But all in all, not too bad. Today, my plan is to cover about 10 miles. I want to end up in the Middle Lake Cathedral Lakes area for camp for the night. There is a 100% chance of rain today. Of course, I'm always hopeful that I can try to make it to camp before the rain hits. But we'll have to see how that goes. My hike is going to start out with a steep uphill climb. I am ready to get on the trail and get moving. An open, pretty meadow as I make my way along the Pinto Park Trail. I think I've nearly completed my initial climb. And after this I'll have a descent and then a flat spot before I come to my biggest climb of the day. I've popped out to my biggest views of the trip so far here in the heart of Pinto Park and right ahead in the direction that I'm going is the famous Cirque of the Towers. Got a little bit of a creek crossing here. Looks like I'm going to need to find a place to try to jump across. It's not terribly wide or terribly deep, but it is a little wet. I really enjoy this forest hiking out here. It's nice and sheltered, calm and relaxing, and it has a very magical smell in the air. It's like walking through a Christmas land. Finishing up my stretch of the Pinto Park Trail, I'm now hopping on the North Fork Trail. The North Fork of the Poposha. I did not expect this, but apparently I am crossing the North Fork here, and it is definitely, definitely a wet foot crossing. Along this stretch, the North Fork Trail parallels the North Fork as it snakes along Sanford Park. And this is a pretty long park. It's about a mile and a half, what it looks like on the map. I'm tackling my biggest climb of the day along the High Meadows Cutoff Trail. I'm facing about 900 feet of vertical gain over the next nine tenths of a mile. Made it up to the top of my climb and enjoyed a late lunch. Unfortunately, it looks and sounds like I'm heading directly into a thunderstorm. I've got four, four and a half miles to go to where I wanted to set up camp for the night. We'll see how the next couple hours go. It started raining pretty much right after I finished lunch, so about an hour now, and I've still got another hour or so until the area that I wanted to camp at shows no signs of letting up on me. Well, my feet will match the rest of me. Wet on this crossing. Through the trees is Smith Lake. 
along the Smith Lake Trail and I've got just a hair over half a mile and a couple hundred feet of gain to make it to Middle Lake which is my aim for camp for the night. Home sweet home. I found camp a couple hundred feet from Middle Lake and the rain has continued but wow look at the cathedral slightly shrouded and there through the trees is Middle Lake herself. Let's take a look at the map for day two. Starting at my campsite at the intersection of the Pinto Park Trail and the Deep Creek Cutoff Trail, I followed Pinto Park Trail to the other side of the map. Picking up at the Pinto Park Trail, I continued along to connect with the North Fork Trail, which took me through Sanford Park. And then I followed the High Meadow Connector to the Smith Lake Trail, which I took to Middle Lake and set up camp for the night. Day two was about 10 and a half miles. Day two of my backpacking adventure in the Wind River Range has been a good day. The rain certainly put a damper on things. It hasn't stopped raining since I finished up lunch. It's at a very light point right now, but there's still a few drops coming down. Had a great hike today and made it to the destination that I'd planned on, which is here at Middle Lake. I did not see a single person today. I saw a tent in Pinto Park about a quarter mile away, and I saw a tent in Stanford Park uh, maybe about three quarters of a mile away, but did not see any human beings out and about. I hope that the rain can go ahead and move out because my plan tomorrow is pretty heavily weighed on having some good weather so I can get up out of the trees and get into the alpine zone as well as do some off-trail travel. So I'm really hopeful that the rain will blow itself out today and leave me a nice day tomorrow. If not, I'm going to have to change my plans a little bit. But that's something to worry about tomorrow. For now, I'm going to settle in and enjoy the rest of the evening. That will be the end of day two. Good night. Good morning, made it to day three, my backpacking adventure in Shoshone National Forest, Paposha Wilderness. Had a calm night last night, the rain finally stopped around an hour before sunset, but nothing really dried out overnight and a heavy dew came in the morning, so another wet tent to pack up, but I'm hoping that this will be my last day to pack up a wet tent. Now the skies look very nice and blue for me today which is a big blessing because I am going to break off trail and it's not a trip in the winds until one breaks off trail so I'm very excited for this portion of my journey but what I have coming up first thing this morning is trying to pick my way up a goalie that's going to take me up about 1200 feet of elevation and 0.8 of a mile so extremely steep and it won't be a trail, uh, so I'll be picking my way up. And it's tough to even call that kind of elevation gain hiking. It may be more of like some scrambling, using my hands as well. But we'll see how things go. But once I accomplish that, that'll take me up to the top of the Lizard's Head Plateau, which should be really cool up top, wide open alpine with hopefully some good views. So that's what I've got this morning. And I'm looking forward to hitting the off trail. Well, this is pretty much how things have been looking for me so far. Bunch of boulders mixed in with some brush and down trees. I've got a long way to go. Now, this looks to be a little bit of an easy stretch for me. Through this beautiful meadow, I'd expect that not many people get to see this meadow. I think that pass dead ahead might be what I'm heading up. I made it to the top of my pass here. Took a good hour and a half to go maybe a mile or so, just climbing straight up, trying to pick my way through boulder fields and brush. Now I'm going to try to find the headwaters of Dickinson Creek. And here is the other side of the pass. 
Dickinson Creek is obviously down there in the meadow. Very strong winds up here. I'm kind of hoping that I can pick it up at a little higher elevation since it's been so wet recently and I won't have to drop all the way down. The headwaters of Dickinson Creek. I'm gonna gather some water here and then continue on my way. Been slow going this morning, but I'm doing my best and I think I'm doing well overall. Almost at the top of my second big pass of the day. This one was only about a 700 foot climb, but I was about five pounds heavier because I gathered water. That valley right through there is where I came up from Middle Lake on the other side. And I'm going to turn around and I should be pretty much on the Lizard Head Plateau. The other side of the pass is a big old marsh, which is not what I expected. A 12,000 foot high marsh. But maybe it's just because of all the rain that's been through recently. Maybe it's not always wet up here. No, I don't know. But uh, it's interesting and very cool. Deadhead is the way I'm heading. Looping around down in the valley there is Sand Creek. And on the other side you can even see Bears Ears Trail cutting along the mountain. Mount Chauvenet. Basically what I'm going to try to do is kind of pick my way across this, loop around. On the other side is a glacier and then past that is the Lizard Head Trail. And there's my glacier. I'm going to try to cut right to the left of it. And on the other side should be the trail. Oh, some pretty awesome views out here. It's been a lot of work. But as usual, totally worth it. These glaciers are bright in the sun. I should be very close to the trail. I'm going to find that and then enjoy a late lunch. I ate lunch in that nice little shadow there. And here's the trail. And this was my view that I enjoyed while getting some calories in. Not too shabby for a lunch view, huh? Looks like my trail is gonna dip down right below that glacier there. Pretty day today. This is the backside of Cathedral Peak, and so way, 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 way down in there is Middle Lake, where I started my day today. Finishing up my stretch along the Bears Ears Trail. Now I'm on the Lizard Head Trail. Now that's a glacier right there. These other little joints I've been seeing today have been snow fields, huh? Right up ahead there are three goats or sheep. Some kind of little animal up there. They're cruising across, making the going look easy. Oh, are they looking at me? Well, I hope that that was my last big climb of the day because I know that where I want to camp is about 1,500 feet lower than where I am now. So certainly don't want to go back up and down again. It was cool to see those animals and cool to see this scenery as well. Finally heading down. More spectacular scenery. And that lake down there is actually one of the ones I'm aiming for. 
I'm looking for Bear Lake or Lizard Head Peak Lake, so one of those two will be where I stay at. Closing in on home. Still got a ways to drop. Lizard Peak Lake. It took forever to get down here from on high. I made it. Now it's time to find a campsite. Home sweet home. Found a spot to set up camp a couple hundred feet from the lake. Maybe about half a mile up when I was dropping down I did see a very nice little site in a meadow. But Lizard Peak Lake was always my goal and I didn't want to stop so close to the finish line. So here I am. The Popoja Wilderness stretches over 100,000 acres, containing 20 peaks greater than 12,000 feet and more than 300 alpine lakes. Let's take a look at the map for day three. I started at my campsite on Middle Lake, took the gully up to connect with the headwaters of Dickinson Creek, followed the top of the plateau to the Bears Ears Trail, it was on that for a short distance to connect with the Lizard Head Trail, Followed that across the top of the plateau and then down, down, down to the Bear Lake Trail. And I set up camp at Lizard Head Peak Lake. Day three was about 11 miles. Day three of my backpacking adventure in the winds has been another great day. In terms of scenery, this was definitely the most spectacular day of my trip so far. And it's also been the most challenging and difficult day of the trip so far. I was able to tackle the off-trail travel this morning. It took about four hours to do that four and a half miles of off trail, but I made it safe and sound. And then coming up and over the Lizard Head Plateau, when I was planning this trip, I thought that that may end up being the highlight of the trip. And boy, was it special up there. Just mountains off to every side, different huge shapes, all kinds of things to see. But I think perhaps my favorite part of the day was the small meadow that I saw when I was coming up the gully above Middle Lake. It was very scenic and idyllic and, you know, it's probably only a handful of people that see that little meadow on a yearly basis, so it was special to experience. I've got camp set up, I'm going to get some dinner in me, and then that'll be the end of the day three. Good night. Good morning. Made the day four, my backpacking trip in the Paposha Wilderness. Had a calm night last night. Both of the past two nights have been great star nights. And for those like myself who live in areas where the Milky Way is little more than a concept, when you get to come out to a place like this and see it splashed across the sky, it is really, really cool. I also decided yesterday to change my plans for the rest of the trip. It happens often when I come to the winds that I'll spend weeks and weeks to put together a plan and feel confident with it and then I'll come out here and I'll see some things on the map that I want to do or I'll hear some advice from other people and I'll end up changing things up. So today I'm going to start out the day by hiking to Lonesome Lake at the base of the Circuit of the Towers and then I think I'm just going to follow the North Fork of the Paposha for most of the rest of the day until I find a place where I want to camp at. After that, I'll continue to take things day by day until I finish up on day six. Well, I'm ready to go see the Circuit of Towers at the base, one of the most famous sites in the winds. It's time to hit the trail. I'm happy to be hiking back in the tree line for part of my day today. One thing that I didn't mention yesterday was while I was hiking on the top of Lizard Head Plateau, the air temperature was only mid-50s, but the sun was still brutal and burning. And it's just kind of funny to think about, you know, getting a little sunburn when the temperature is only in the 50s. But that's the situation I found myself in yesterday, so I'm happy to kind of be out of the sun's rays for a little bit as much as I do enjoy the warmth that they give. I also enjoy the shelter of the trees. Finished up the Lizard Head Peak Trail. Now I'm at the Lizard Head Meadows. Following along the North Fork Trail towards Lonesome Lake. Pretty flowers. 
and pretty mountains. Well, here she blows. One of the most famous locations in the winds. Lonesome Lake at the base of the Circle of the Towers. Spectacular. The scale is enormous here. Retracing my steps along the North Fork Trail, heading east away from the Cirque. There's the North Fork of the Poposha flowing down from Lonesome Lake. I've got a wet foot crossing of the North Fork of the Poposha River here. It's been thundering for about an hour behind me. I've been trying to walk fast to stay ahead of it, but it's catching up. This is my last glimpse of the North Fork of the Poposha River. I followed it on day two and followed it on day four. I've now returned to the Pinto Park Trail. I'm going to be on it for one mile. And I did this same section on day two, but I'll be taking a different route after that. Finishing up my section of the Pinto Park Trail, if I were to continue along, I'd be back at where I camped at the first night. But instead, I'm going to hop on the Ice Lakes Trail. And I just passed a couple who said they stayed at Lower Bear Lake, and it was really nice. So I think that's going to be where I aim for. I'm standing in the middle of the outlet from Lower Bear Lake. About to grab this little campsite that's up in the trees based on what the couple told me. Lower Bear Lake. It's quiet here. I like it. Home sweet home. Nice little campsite here a couple hundred feet above Lower Bear Lake. During the Great Depression, Finest Mitchell and Associates stocked over 300 mountain lakes on horseback by hauling fish in buckets. The sloshing of the water gave the fish oxygen to survive the long treks into the Wind River wilderness. Let's take a look at the map for day four. Started at my campsite at Lizard Head Peak Lake, took the short Bear Lake Trail to connect to the Lizard Head Trail to then connect with the North Fork Trail. I followed that to Lonesome Lake at the base of the Circle of the Towers, then retraced my steps and continued along the North Fork Trail until I came to the Ice Lakes Trail, which I broke off on and set up camp at Lower Bear Lake. Day four was about 11 and a half miles. I promised Joey that I'd dip my feet in a lake for him, so here we go. I give it better than that. <sighs> day four of my backpacking adventure in the Poposha wilderness has been a great day. Getting to see the Cirque of the Towers from Lonesome Lake was really a spectacular highlight. And I had some great hiking through the woods for the rest of the day. Now I'm set up at the beautiful Lower Bear Lake. This day was less physically difficult than day three, and it had less rain than day two, so I think it's probably fair to call this the best day of the trip so far. I've got dinner in me, I've got camp set up, I'm going to get settled in for a relaxing evening, and that'll be the end of day four. Good night. Good morning. Made to day five, my backpacking adventure in the Poposha Wilderness, Shoshone National Forest, Wyoming. Had a calm, relaxing night last night. The stars were out once again in full force. It seems like the moon's been rising about midway through the night, so giving me some great views of the stars around the time that I go to bed. Right now, I'm a little under 20 miles from the trailhead which is a good timing since I have about two days left of the trip. 
My plan today is to perhaps go to the Stew Creek Basin. It seems like it'd be a pretty area and that will take me in the direction I need to go to finish up the trip tomorrow. The sun has just risen over the far ridge. Its warming rays are reaching me now and I'm gonna get breakfast finished up, pack up camp, and then it'll be time to hit the trail. West Echo Lake along the Ice Lake Trail. Directly across the trail is the East Echo Lake. The Ice Lakes Trail has begun to climb steeply toward the Deep Creek Lakes and has afforded me a cool view looking down on East Echo Lake. One of the Deep Creek Lakes. Beautiful clear day today. Ice Lake. The namesake of the Ice Lakes Trail. Chief Lake. Continuing along the Ice Lakes Trail. Boot Lake. Right beside Chief Lake. Looks like I've got a pass to climb coming up. Made it to the top of the pass, earning an expansive view of the other side. Looks like I'll be dropping right back down. This is the lake I was just looking down on. A steep rocky climb to get here. Continuing along the Ice Lakes Trail. There's a little chipmunk. Right, right there. And behind him is Tayo Park, where I'm gonna drop down and then continue on. Now that's a meadow right there. Finished up the Ice Lakes Trail. Anytime you see no stock advised, it means the trail is gonna be steep and tough and rocky. But I'm now hopping on the Teo Lake Trail for a little bit. I've got a wet foot crossing here. And if I understand the map correctly, this is the middle fork of the Poposia, which I have not seen since day one. Finished up my short jaunt on the Teo Park Trail. And now I'll be hopping on the middle fork trail for a little bit. Following that. Middle fork of the Poposia. No offense to the builders, but this is kind of a weak fence here along the Middle Fork Trail. Right off the Middle Fork Trail is Bill's Park, a pretty meadow, and it's just started raining a little bit. Hopefully they'll peter out pretty quickly. There's a bird, king of the rock right there. Oh, there's another bird right behind him. I see his head poking up. Two birds on that rock. Oh, there's a third on the ground. Oh, bird. Oh, four. Five. I've actually now counted seven birds, and there may be an eighth hiding back there as well. The whole flock of these little ground birds, they blend in pretty well. I'm not going to get any closer. I don't want to spook them, but 
Oh my goodness, maybe there's nine. Holy moly. I'm feeling like I'm in danger if these guys turn on me. There's so many. I'm back away slowly. It was a surprisingly rambunctious climb up the Stowe Creek Cutoff Trail from Middle Fork. Now I'm at Stowe Creek and another wet foot crossing for me as a few raindrops trickle down. Stowe Creek Lake. It is indeed a beautiful basin here. Now it's time for me to find a spot to set up camp for the night. Home sweet home. Find a nice sheltered site here up above the second of the Stew Creek Lakes. A couple hundred feet away from it and that's gonna do real nicely for me. The first federally protected national forest in the United States Shoshone National Forest follows the spine of the Rocky Mountains from Yellowstone National Park in the north to the Wind River Range in the south. Let's take a look at the map for day five. I started at my campsite on Lower Bear Lake, followed the Ice Lakes Trail for several miles through many beautiful lakes until I reached the other side of the map. Continuing along the Ice Lakes Trail, I then connected with the Teo Park Trail, the Middle Fork Trail, the Stowe Creek Cutoff Trail, until I came to my final trail of the day, the Stowe Creek Lakes Trail, which I followed down to the second Stowe Creek to set up camp. Day five was about 12 miles. Day five for my backpacking adventure in the Shoshone National Forest has been another great day. It may have even usurped day number four as the best day of the trip. Lots of beautiful hiking today, Got to chat with some cool people along the way, and I have yet again another great campsite at another beautiful lake site. I've got camp set up, I've got dinner in me, it looks like a peaceful evening. I'm going to settle in and relax on the last night of my adventure. As long as nothing crazy happens, that'll be the end of day five. Good night. Good morning. Made it to day six, my backpacking adventure in the Paposha Wilderness. Always a bittersweet moment to reach the last day of a trip, especially one of this magnitude. Sweet because I'm capping off the end of what has been an incredible time. Bitter because every time I come to Wyoming, I leave a little piece of my heart behind and it'll be another year until next summer before I'm able to come out back to this beautiful area but I've still got one final day to enjoy here I've got about seven and a half miles to go back out to the trailhead it's a beautiful day the weather is clear should be awesome time for me to finish up the trip I'm gonna get breakfast in me and then it'll be time to pack up and hit the trail before I break down today I thought it could be helpful to talk about the characteristics that I look for when choosing a tent site and this is specific to where I'm pitching my tent, not a campsite in general, although a good tent site definitely contributes to the campsite decision. There are five main characteristics that I look for when choosing a spot to pitch my tent, and in no particular order, number one is wind protection. That could come in the form of trees or boulders or lay of the land, anything to help block the wind from buttressing the tent. Number two is other element protection, specifically the sun and the rain. And typically that will come in the form of a canopy overhead. So my first two characteristics are basically I'm looking for blockage on the side and the top to keep my tent protected. Number three is water drainage. I want to make sure that the tent is not set up in a big water runway and it's also not set up in an area that the water would pool underneath it. Number four is slope. For me personally, I don't mind uh, a bit of a sloped tent site. It can be sloped from head to toe, it can be sloped from side to side, but you don't want to get too big of a slope 
and some people do prefer much more of a flat ground although that can be tricky to find number five is a comfortable looking piece of ground uh, if it's lumpy or if there's rocks or roots you know those kind of things can try to be avoided but if I've hit those first four and the ground looks a little uncomfortable I'll probably go ahead and take it anyways so those are the five main characteristics that I look for when I'm choosing a site to pitch my tent if you have any other helpful tips or ideas please feel free to share in the comments thank you let's take a look at the map for day six starting at my campsite at the Stew Creek Lake I'm going to follow the Stew Creek Lake Trail all the way out past Roaring Fork Lake to return to my trailhead at Worthen Meadow Reservoir. Day six will be about seven and a half miles for a trip total of approximately 62 miles. A brilliant bluebird day at the Stowe Creek Lakes. A pair of fellas just walked by leading some llamas. That was pretty cool to see. On my last big climb of the trip, heading up to the pass, from which I will drop down to Roaring Fork Lake, and then the Worthen Meadows Trailhead. Directly ahead is Wind River Peak. And as we come to the right, kind of in the middle now, is Lizard Head Peak. Really great view up here as I continue along the Stowe Creek Trail. He's an avid Fongo player though. I have to say that I find the Stowe Creek's Lake Trail a little bit funny because it is a trail named after a set of lakes named after a creek named after presumably some dude named Stowe so it's like a naming in inception with several layers boardwalk boardwalk roaring fork lake the last of the cornucopia of lakes that I've borne witness to on this trip Six days in the Wind River Range, done and dusted. What an incredible adventure. Spectacular hiking, cool people, great times. Once again, couldn't have asked for anything better in this corner of the world. Speaking of people, there was about a 24 hour period from when I joined the Lizard Head Trail to when I left Lonesome Lake where I saw up to 50 people. The other five days I saw about 30 in total. So you can definitely find solitude in the winds. Words cannot accurately convey the feelings that come from getting to spend a chunk of time in this beautiful land. So I'll keep it short and simple. I am looking forward to getting a shower and a juicy Wyoming steak. So that'll be the end of this trip. Until next time, thanks for tuning into Lane's World. Goodbye.